Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. As you can see, you can, you can see, see that. exactly that. <laughs> this is our first ever kind of a news thing that we wanted to do. Just like everything else, it's going to start a bit janky. Got a little bit of wallpaper over there. Let's look at some of the big news coming this week. Yeah. Right, first order of business then, we're going to look at the Switch Lite, which has obviously come out fairly recently and has sold already 2 million units in about 10 days. Is that right, Mark? 2 million, I think, uh, yeah, 11 days, 2 million units sold, which is unbelievable. And on top of that, actually, there's the, what is it, the, the Pokemon Switch? Yes. I think yeah. that has just dropped some into someone's hands a bit early. That does look delightful. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks nice. I mean, what do you think of the whole not docking thing on the Nintendo Switch Lite? I think it's a smart move because... Uh, historically, Nintendo have made their money from handhelds, especially since the Wii was their last big home console. So having the hybrid was a good start, and now having one that's exclusive, I think it's a good idea. It gives people the choice, doesn't it? It's completely the different view that I didn't even think of that side of it. What did you think? Well, I thought it was this ridiculous move. Uh, you're essentially getting a Switch that doesn't switch. Mm. Yeah, I, I get you, but um, when you think about the fact that the 3DS then had a 2DS, that you had a 3DS that didn't have 3D. So they start off with a brand, they get it strong, and then they diverse the fire away from it. Next up, we've got the Switch has apparently outsold the Xbox One <laughs> based on... Uh, based on the corner of all knowledge, which is Wikipedia. So take it as you will. <laughs> but according to Wikipedia, the Switch has now outsold the Xbox One. Which is pretty impressive. It's very impressive. Right, next we're going to have a look at some sales numbers for some of Nintendo's first party games. First one of which is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which mm -hmm. came out fairly early in the Switch's life, to be fair, didn't it? And according to the most recent sales figures, it's now on, is that 19.01 million? Holy smokes. To be honest, who with a Nintendo Switch hasn't got Mario yeah, Kart? This is it, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it like the law? Well, yeah, it should be if it's not. <laughs> I mean, I say that, I say that. We're not huge fans of it. we appreciate it for what it is we don't play it as much as other people yeah it's a great game obviously it's a port of the game from the uh from the wii u but when you think of the sales numbers from the switch that we just uh, looked at earlier what yeah. 42 million yeah sold worldwide and 19 million of those people that's pretty decent have, that's yeah, a pretty Mario decent well, they call it an attachment rate yeah and that's, that's a that's a very high one to be fair isn't it yeah but smash with 15.7 in quarter of the time well yeah a lot less time whatever it yeah. is yeah all right the next one is definitely interesting to me because i put the game bloodstained into a video not long ago saying yeah. that you should all buy it and you destroyed me <laughs> <laughs> because the performance apparently later in the game isn't great which is fair mm. they've just released an update for it which which completely fixes the input lag of the game which was a big issue so there was a slight delay on the nintendo yeah. switch every yeah. time you tried to move yeah. And so far it's looking decent, isn't it? Yeah, we played a bit of it earlier. I don't, now, you know, bearing in mind we haven't got as far into the game that it may have uh, needed to yeah. test it properly. But from what we've played, there was certainly no input lag, was there? No, and you can see some footage on the screen at the moment mm. just to give you guys an idea of what that's running like. Okay, so the next point we're going to look at then is the fact that there's just been a trailer release for Alien Isolation. Now, I played this on the uh, PlayStation 4. I don't know why I'm celebrating. No, I don't. You're going to hide in a cupboard. I'm, I'm, I literally, <laughs> I'm my, 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 my initial instinct was to jump <laughs> under the desk. <laughs> so, yeah. For people that uh, like horror games, then this is coming out. It's a great game. I played it all the way through on the, on the PS4, I believe it was. Um, I was saying to you the other day, wasn't I? We were talking about horror because I've just done a horror list recently. Um, as good a game as it is, I do find it falls into that trap. And I don't know how games... Mm. Or, or movies avoid this to be fair of once they've shown their hand anything that was scary becomes irritating the more you use it you know? yeah. yeah well less is more isn't it in, yeah. in that kind of thing yeah. what was it the game that we both really enjoyed was Layers of Fear yeah. because it didn't have the big, big bad the big bad was your own psychological exactly state right. wasn't yeah, it exactly right and this uh, don't get me wrong for the first few hours of this game it does it fantastically yeah. well Re like, probably the best I've ever seen it done in terms of it very rarely shows the alien and yeah. it comes about and you just realize how powerful it is and you've got no chance at all mm. but then just just towards the end you start to see it a little bit maybe too, too often i don't know you I wouldn't have got that far <laughs> <laughs> the steam was bad with you just bought in sale bought in sale yeah, bought in yeah. sale you end up with this huge backlog mm. of games you know you'll never finish yeah it's a weird thing isn't it i think the problem problem is that um so some of the games have such a poor quality mm. and have clearly just been plonked on there because the Switch is doing well. <laughs> and that's when it becomes an issue. I mean, too many good games is never a problem, no. isn't it? It's just the time to play them. But when you have such poor quality games, which is becoming 
more of an issue. This yeah, water toilet has been a, it's been an issue for a while. To be yeah. fair, it does. You know, it, it, it dilutes the uh, the quality on the system. You're looking through in every game, every screenshot you look at, every trailer looks naff. It starts to thin. Or it looks too good. Or it looks too good to be true. That's another problem as well, yeah. for sure. But then you have this, uh, an issue arises, doesn't it? Because yeah. it's all oh, of this rubbish on here. You know, it's too much of this rubbish. And as soon as you hear the words too much, it becomes yeah. a problem, doesn't it? You know? So why don't Nintendo have a ranking system like Steam do? Because Steam have obviously got Steam reviews, yeah, yeah, which yeah. obviously can lead to review bombing mm -hmm. if the company does something that they don't like. Yeah. Is it because of their first party titles? I don't believe so. Because um, this is the strange thing about Nintendo. I've bought Nintendo consoles since, well, all the way back to the Super Nintendo. I didn't have the NES. Yeah. And the 3DS had it, had a star system, the ranking system. The Wii U had it, I believe. Wii, I can't remember, to be honest, but they've done it before and they seem to drop things that work. It's yeah. very odd. They had an activity log on the 3DS. They watered it down for the Wii U. So it was in there before? Yeah, on another platform? On another platform, but they've dropped it. They seem to do something that works and then drop it or, or dilute it. I don't understand why they do that. It's very odd. They seem to not want to put money into online like moderation almost, because mm -hmm. that would require moderation, wouldn't it? Mm. You should have comments <laughs> well, they, all sorts and it's family friendly. Yeah, no, absolutely, but they didn't have comments before. It was literally just a star oh. system. It, oh. was, it was a zero to five star system. Right. Nice and easy. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't remember ever being a problem with things like review bombing or anything yeah, like that. No. It was just a nice, simple way of seeing what people thought of. All right, so to finish with, I think, Glenn, you had the idea of talking about the games that we've been playing this week. Yeah, just maybe a, a quick chat about some of the games we've played this yeah. week. So, um, do you want to start? What have you, what have you been playing? Well, haven't I been playing? Um, that sounds weird. There's quite a lot <laughs> I've been playing. There's about 700 games. <laughs> yeah. Now, I went back to a bit of Bloodstain just to see if the patch had made improvements and yeah. it was decent. But the majority of my playtime this week has been the return of the Obra Dinn. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a game that is. I don't know a lot about this other than the screenshots that are in black oh, and white. And do you know what? It's interesting, but... There's so much on it that you would love, right? Yeah. So, for example, that lovely visual style that you see on the trailer, mm. you can choose about six other platforms. So you can have it look like a Commodore 64. Oh, nice, yeah. You can have it look like an old LCD TV. I like it when games do that. It's, just, it's brilliant. It's just a little, a little touch, isn't it? A little personal touch. I Delightful. Like yeah, 60 like frames per second. Obviously, that visual style lends itself to it doesn't really matter what the resolution is and things like that. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. It's yeah. running so smooth. So what's, what is it about? I, I've, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Go on. All right. Go. Have a laugh. I'm just delivering uh, a sandwich. We're recording. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in, outtakes. <laughs> so it's a fictional take on the East India Trading Company. Oh, okay. And yeah. they've lost a ship in right. the middle of the ocean and it's, it's come back to port. Everyone's dead. Mm -hmm. There's like 60 odd people on there. And you've basically got to go on as an insurance investigator oh, nice. and try and piece together how everyone died. So what is it, first person? So or? first person yeah. and it takes place, you've got this little uh, pocket watch thing that rewinds time and, and okay. when you find a dead body, you can look at the circumstances surrounding the death. Oh, right. And from conversation, you've got a piece together and you've got a little um, manifest. A bit like um, the Batman games with the... the, the I can't say, ever say that word. You know Who needs word? to say detective? Detective mode. <laughs> That's the word I wanted to say. It's like that, but it's so much more in depth. And there's so much to, down to the player. Like, it will let you deduce who they are. Right. And if you're a bit smarter, hopefully, you can do that like in advance or it will say you probably should wait until you've oh, seen more see, yeah. information kind of thing. Very good game. What about yourself? Well, I've been playing um, a game called Bendy and the Ink Machine for the most yeah, part. Now, yeah. I played this, um, well, I started playing it because of the horror list. Yeah. Um, I'd had it for a while. I said in that video that um, my missus had bought it for me for my birthday. And I didn't expect, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. I just liked the art style. Mm. So um, when I turned it on, it's a horror game, but it's, it's, it's fantastic. It, it's such an interesting premise. So you're basically an animator and it's set in a studio. I don't know if it's set in the twenties and thirties, but it borrows heavily from that style. Okay, you can imagine like um, the it's got that sepia tone the to sepia it. Sepia tone. It? It's got the you know it, you can imagine them um, flash studios or Walt Disney of the day. Yeah, the, the rubber hosing. Arms yeah, there they are. Yeah, yeah, and you get called back to this uh, studio and you don't know what's gone on, and there's something called the ink machine that's basically um, bringing the characters to light, but um, they've turned evil. And it's again, okay. it's a first person survival horror in the vein of things like Outlast and stuff like that, although you can attack this time, you have a weapon. Thank goodness. Having said that, the combat's a bit clunky, it's probably right. the worst bit of the game, but it doesn't matter, it's just a really yeah. interesting game, really worth playing actually. See, I did start that one, but 
I'm checking down. Something happened. <laughs> yeah. I think it was glitch. Yeah, like <laughs> an error has occurred in your game. Didn't play again. <laughs> All right, so that's our first ever news type podcasty thing. thing yeah, yeah. Hasn't got a name. Nope. So maybe in the comments you could let us know what we should call it. It has to be good because it's got a, it's got to be webcasty, newscasty yeah. thing. Yeah, it's got to be and good. That's, that's a pretty strong name that you've just come up. I tell you what, so. we'll give the we'll give the best one a game. Mm. Good. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Nice one. It's the sign off then, isn't it? Yeah. Just, I mean, let us know what you thought of it. Yeah. It's going to be awkward. I hate being in front of the camera. <laughs> My eyes bulge up when I'm in front of it. So just bear all that in mind. I hate it as well. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep tweaking away at it. But let us know what you want to see in it. And um, we shall make it so. Exactly right. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. Cheers, guys, for all things Switch all the time. Keep your Switch up. Do I have to say see you on camera? No, that's lame. That is, isn't it? <laughs> Happy gaming. <laughs> Done. <laughs> nice one.